Good morning, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I wanted to make a quick video this morning just to talk about some of my thoughts and opinions about the three ethics of permaculture and how they tie into my gift giving philosophy at the holidays. Now, first, let's have a little caveat here. Um, we live in a really imperfect society. In fact, I made a video on my other channel, Parker's Housefrau, talking about Black Friday and the Buy Nothing Project. We are immersed in a consumer culture where it's nearly impossible to make choices that are always in alignment with our ideals and our ethics. So I just want to encourage you uh, as you watch this video, it's not a condemnation of choices that you have to make or that you have the energy to make. It's not a condemnation of anybody watching this video or a judgment against anybody. Uh, we all have to operate in an imperfect system. So I think that it's really important we remember to criticize the system in which we are immersed and not individuals. So when you see somebody giving gifts that are not in alignment with your ethics or are not what I'm talking about here, or if you have to make choices that are imperfect, I know I often do, please don't feel judged. Please know that um, any concerns that I have, any frustrations I have are against the consumer culture that we live in and not those of us who have to do the best that we can in the moment to make choices, however imperfect, while we are living in a system that is stacked against our values. So I wanna make it really clear on this channel too that I strongly believe in social permaculture. In fact, you should check out Luby McNamara's book on the subject. It is an excellent piece. But also, uh, I know that some folks are really tempted to say, why are you talking about giving gifts at the holidays and permaculture? How do those things possibly intertwine? Permaculture is not just gardening. Social permaculture is a very valid and important part of our permaculture. When we are giving gifts at the holidays, there is nothing that we are doing that is not having an impact on the other people in our community, other people around the world and the planet. Permaculture ethics are care for the planet, care for people and fair share. All three of those things are highly, highly applicable when we're talking about interfacing in some way with consumer culture and when we're talking about gift giving. So permaculture may be garden design, it may be thinking about creating a sustainable way of living for you on your home and on your property, but it also has ramifications for the greater society, for our greater culture. If we are thinking about truly sustainable living, that doesn't stop at the borders of our property. Our choices have impacts on people and the planet and therefore are highly relevant to permaculture. So let's talk about how the three permaculture ethics are a lens through which I view my choices when it comes to gift giving. Again, I can't do this perfectly. I obviously make choices to give gifts that are not totally in alignment with the three ethics. It's really important to remember that the folks that we love and care for, who are the recipients of our gifts, may not have the same worldview that we do. They may not have the same outlook and they may not really care about environmentalism or they may not really care about labor practices, but they are people that we love and want to give gifts to. And also people that give us gifts may not have ideals in alignment with ours. So I think it's really, really important as we're doing gift giving at the holidays and how we choose to approach that, that we, again, we have grace and compassion for ourselves as we are operating in an imperfect system. And we have grace and compassion and kind of a, a liberal mindedness in terms of accepting that not everybody views life the way that we do. First, permaculture ethic is care for the planet. I'm really grateful that we live in the age of a technology where it's so easy to access information very, very quickly with the click of our keyboard, right? For me, when I'm going to purchase products for somebody else, be it raw materials from which I'm going to home make a gift, be it a finished product that I'm gifting, it's much easier now for me to research, to look up, um, whether the production and the shipment of that item are in alignment with permaculture ethic number one. So it's not that difficult to look up, how was this product that I'm purchasing produced? What environmental regulations, what environmental impact were involved in the production of this item? How does it harm the planet? Or how was it produced with sustainable or regenerative practices? 
I also want to look at not only the item that I'm buying as a gift, but the packaging that it comes in. If I have the opportunity to support a business that is thinking really earnestly and designing with environmentally conscious packaging, that's important to me and I want to make sure that I support producers who are doing that. I also want to think about what is the carbon footprint? What is the shipping footprint of the item that I'm purchasing? Were the components, um, where were they made and where did it come together and uh, get produced? And then how far was it shipped to get to me or my loved one? The older I get, the more I have kind of a little bit more financial wiggle room to think strongly about supporting a local economy, local producers with a small shipping footprint and producing um, or supporting however I can that kind of vibrant local community because that pushes us toward resilience. Those items are sometimes a little bit more expensive. They may be expensive in terms of spending a little bit more uh, monetarily to afford them, but they're less expensive in terms of environmental impact. So I can choose to pay for a cheaper product that gets shipped much farther. I'm gonna pay an environmental cost for that. And for me, I'd rather spend a little bit more, give fewer gifts overall, and choose a local producer that uses environmentally conscious packaging and an item that is not shipped very far. I also think it's really important to consider the gift that we're giving. How long will the recipient use it? What is the lifespan of this item? How much will the recipient value it? And therefore, how long will it stay out of the waste stream? Is this an item that can be mended in the future? Is this an item that could be repurposed or given to the thrift store or a hand-me-downable item in the future? Or is it something that is probably gonna break pretty quickly or is something that the recipient will lose interest in relatively quickly and can't be repurposed or recycled in some way? I really wanna think about the whole lifespan of the item that I'm giving and what that means for it at the end of its lifespan and where it ends up in the waste stream. This is really especially important when you're giving gifts to kids. As the parent of four children, this has been a frustration that I've had a lot, is people, I think, sometimes just think about the volume of gifts they want to give to kids. They buy the consumerist lie that we need to just give kids a ton of gifts at the holiday. So my kids have often been the recipient of things that like they don't really want and that are poorly made, break quickly, made out of plastic crap, and just end up in the waste stream very rapidly. Either my kids will lose interest quickly and it's something that can't be regifted or passed down or given to the thrift store because of the nature of the product, or it's something that just isn't well made and breaks very quickly. And for me, that's uh, maybe because again, I'm an idealist, that causes me stress and sadness knowing that something, a huge pile of somethings unwrapped on Christmas morning are gonna end up in the landfill sooner rather than later. To know that somebody that I care about has spent their hard earned dollars on something that my kids won't enjoy for very long and that doesn't have a long lifespan and will just end up uh, producing pollution in the end, that seems like a flawed, uh, really harmful lie that our culture tells us in terms of our gift giving choices. It just causes harm and hurt all the way down the row. So let's just keep that in mind when we are choosing to give gifts, particularly to children. culture ethic number two is care for people. And this one can be like a little bit sticky. A lot of us, when we think about caring for the planet and the permaculture ethic number one, we think about sustainable gift giving. We think about having this focus on handmade, fewer gifts, simple holidays, um, giving something that is thrifted. I know our family, we do handmade holidays, but we also include um, books and games and that as well that are newly purchased, but also buying things at the thrift store. If we give clothes, they're purchased from the thrift store. If we give uh, toys, they're purchased from the thrift store. And a lot of people are not gonna be happy getting gifts that are purchased at the thrift store. A lot of people want new with new packaging and they don't want things that are hand-me-downs and they don't want things that are thrifted. So it's really important in our gift giving, does the recipient even want the thing that we are attempting to give them? If not, it's a completely wasted effort all around. And maybe it would be better just not to give a gift at all or just to write a nice card or something like that, um, rather than give a gift that may align with your 
uh, earth care values, but doesn't align with people care. The recipient has to be able to enjoy it and, and use the thing that you're giving them. I know I really enjoy giving home baked goods at the holidays. That's something that I feel reflects my ethics and my values, but I know not everybody wants to receive that as a gift. I have a lot of friends who are on, you know, special diets and things like that. And it would be really um, selfish of me to only give out of what I enjoy making and giving and not think at all about what the recipient can actually use and is meaningful to them as well. So gift giving is a skill in that way, a skill that I think is really important to hone and uh, be able to look into the life of the person that we want to give a gift to and think, how does this thing I want to make or I want to give them, how does this actually fit into their life and is it something that they will cherish and enjoy? The other side of people care is thinking about people care for ourselves at the holidays. We get so much marketing and messaging that we should go into debt in order to give generously to everybody that we care about. That is not people care. If we are giving outside of our budget and causing emotional uh, stress from taking on debt, causing financial stress of debt, that is not people care for our household. It is not people care for us as individuals. So when we are giving gifts at the holidays, we need to think about the recipients and we also need to think about what it is doing for us as individuals in terms of, is it a blessing or is it a stressor to us and to the person that we're giving it to? There's a third place that people care is really important here, and that is the laborers and workers that are used to produce the items that we give as gifts. So as somebody who loves to do homemade gifts, this is something that I'm still not exempt from. Were the laborers that produced the raw materials that I'm using, were they paid a fair wage? Did they have a safe working environment? Particularly as somebody who likes to sew, um, garment workers, that includes the textile workers who do the weaving and the dyeing are often subject to horrible working conditions and um, not paid a living wage. So for me, I really wanna think about, does my gift giving have people care, not only for the recipient, not only for myself and my family, but also for the workers who created the item that I'm giving in the first place. The fact that when we are giving gifts and spreading joy at the holidays, it cannot come at the expense of a worker's well-being in another country. Our gift giving has to be something that benefits every person in the stream of creating, producing, giving that gift. So the third ethic of permaculture is fair share. And this is one I think is on our minds a lot more at the holiday. We want to have goodwill toward all people. We are in a heart uh, outlook of charitable giving. I think that's really, really great. For me, I definitely give at the holidays uh, charitably. And I know that I have some friends and family members who really appreciate actually not getting gifts. They don't want gifts. They don't need more material possessions, but they value and appreciate a gift given to a charity in their name. Now, always we wanna do due diligence and check out like a charity navigator or something like that to look at the score that these various charities have to see how they utilize their resources and whether our gifts are actually going to make the planet better or to make the lives of people better. Uh, uh, but I think that that's something that is not fully appreciated as a gift that somebody that you love can really, really value. I know if somebody gave me a, a donation to a charity that I value in my name, that is a really, really meaningful gift for me. It's something where like maybe I didn't have the financial resources to give to that environmental organization this year, but if someone did it in my name, instead of giving me yet another you know, object that they bought at the store, that is something that I would really, really cherish and know that um, the pennies that were given in my, in my name are going out and uh, doing good in the world. And that means a lot to me. So Again, know the person that you're giving the gift to and know if that's something that they would value and appreciate. But the way I think about fair share is, is there some way I could give extravagantly in my local community? Is there a family I know in need or a church or other NGO that could help connect me with a local family that I can give to in an extravagant way? Is there some small measure of deprivation I could have at the holidays, some extravagance that I could cut back on a little bit so that I can give more freely in my community and help connect with somebody who uh, maybe wouldn't have any extravagance at their holidays? Now, there are lots and lots of ways that we can do this. And I think it's really important to touch base with those local uh, 
organizations in your community that are doing good at the holidays. Because as I've said many, many times, one of the keys to resilience is supporting our local communities. Yes, absolutely fair share, absolutely giving to those greater organizations out in the world that do uh, good environmental work and do good people care, but also thinking about having some of your holiday uh, giving contributions staying in your local community is really, really important. So one of the things that en encapsulates all three of the permaculture ethics for me is thinking about less at the holidays, simplifying the holidays. We live in a consumer culture that tells us go into debt, buy more stuff. If you buy more things, if you have that giant pile of shiny wrapped gifts on Christmas morning, you are being a good parent, you are being a good partner, you are being a good friend. Give more, that's how we show love. Going into debt and buying more things that harm laborers and the planet, that is not how we show love. That's not how we uh, celebrate the holidays. I mean, it is because that's the consumer culture we're in, but let's push back against it. I don't believe that is the way we should be celebrating the holidays. So our family talks a lot about simplifying, about backing off. Do we need to give so many gifts this year? What kind of gifts do we want to give? What is going to be meaningful for people in our family and in alignment with our values? We don't have to go into debt. We don't have to give ever more and more and more at the holidays. Um, in fact, I really think it's important as permaculturists that we push back against that. Simple, small gifts that we can use and enjoy that are made sustainably and are able to be returned to the earth when we're done with them or passed down to somebody else or mended and used for a really long period of time are kind of the way our family is going. But even more than that, we're going on reducing the quantity and having more shared experience, enjoying much more time playing games together as a family, going on hikes in the wilderness, and much more time focusing on the connectedness of the holidays, focusing on enjoying each other's company. It's not about stuff. It's about celebrating the fact that we are um, a family, that we love our friends, that we enjoy this beautiful planet that we get to be on. And it's not about giving stuff and getting stuff. And I think if we can keep that focus, at least for us as a family, it's much easier to live out those three permaculture ethics. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'll have more from the garden in my next video. Um, I do want to kind of keep this channel focusing on social permaculture because I think that it is really, really important. I know I get pushback every time I post something about social permaculture. Videos about social permaculture don't actually get as many views on this channel. So I know folks have said, well, Angela, you post about these things because you want the clicks. These videos actually don't get as many views as videos where I'm out in my garden, but I feel it's really important to have integrated permaculture that folds all of the elements of our life together so that we have truly sustainable design. And I don't wanna ignore how important social permaculture is. It's just as important as the food we're growing if we want to actually have sustainable lives and we want to have resilient communities. So I hope you are enjoying your holiday season. I'll be back from the garden next time. And you can check out my Patreon down in the description. Thanks.